On this edition of Media Minute Roundtable, we're going to be talking about some upcoming movie trailers, our favorite movies by the decade, and some tricks animators have done to sneak adult content into some kids' films. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to the Media Minute Roundtable. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And it's time for another episode four. I can't yeah. believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Four episodes Stuff. so far of Media Minute Roundtable. We're kind of killing it, I think. I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's a yeah. full month. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, for sure. For happy, sure. happy month anniversary, yeah. I guess. Totally. I don't know. <laughs> it's also Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, Bill Murray, where you at? Yeah. Speaking of uh, Bill Murray, uh, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite movies by the decade in a little bit. But uh, hmm. first... <laughs> Speaking of stuff from, like, the past, they brought back the Mighty Ducks. Yeah. yeah. Emilio. Emilio is back. The, he's back. The, the unknown sheen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where's he been hiding? <laughs> I, I don't think he's been in anything since the Mighty Ducks. Probably not, hey? Like, Young Guns? Those were good movies. Yeah. yeah. I think he was just, like, hibernating. He was just waiting. He was, just he was like, waiting for the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, he's like, I, I know it, it will, it'll happen, so call me and I will emerge. Like, he'll, he'll, he just came up out of his fiber. Yeah. Hyper- this one came out of nowhere for me. Yeah. It's like, yeah. the last thing I was expecting, like a Mighty Ducks remake. Yeah, like I remember watching like the original movie and being super stoked, but like I won't lie, watching the trailer for this, I'm kind of like, eh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the Mighty Ducks was one of those movies that your teacher would wheel out like, <laughs> yes. on an afternoon that they didn't want to teach or something. Like I, I'm sure that every time I've seen the Mighty Ducks, it was at that or uh, when I went to like summer camp one year, I remember watching the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> they they wheel out that big like black cart yeah. with like oh. the, the C- CRT tube yeah. TV yeah. from like the AV club. Oh yeah, yeah. They got a top loading VCR. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> those were the best though because you knew like it was gonna be an easy day. Like you're just like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, like it's we're like, just watching yeah, movies just today. Watching movies. <laughs> and they just kill the lights and yeah, yeah. That's a good, good day at school. I know like a few teacher friends of mine. It's like they do that when they're hungover. So now that I know that, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh man. I'm like wow! I'm like grade three, Mr. Prescott. Like that makes makes perfect sense right now. Oh, you yeah, just named him, yeah. huh? Just yeah, named him. Oh yeah, well, he's awesome. I love Mr. Prescott. He was one of my favorite teachers. But yeah, like you don't, don't need doxing anybody. I ain't doxing. I'm just saying. <laughs> I I see through it now. Now that like I ca- I'm kind of got the inside. It's like wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason we watch so many movies in grade I wonder, three. What if they teach that? <laughs> In, well, like, when you go to school to be a teacher, it's like, <laughs> yeah. if, if you need to phone yeah. it in, yeah. Mighty Ducks. Yeah, if you need to correct tests or something like that, yeah. just put on the TV and, you know, the kids will watch. Absolutely. But, yeah, Mighty Ducks, it's called Game Changers. Yeah. Uh, looks like Emilio is playing, like, an old, crotchety, uh, like, uh, ring guy now. Like, like yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, like, what, what happened to, like, he was like a, is it that? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of another like kid sports movie, but didn't he like end up coaching the like the Mighty Ducks because of like a court thing? <laughs> I can't remember the the plot of the original Mighty Ducks. I kind of hope that's remember. the original plot. I don't remember yeah. either. I but might that... be thinking of the Sandlot. <laughs> so oh, maybe I don't. I don't know. So many of these like <laughs> underdog sports kids things that or, uh, yeah. slept yeah. up in the eighties. Slapshot. That was that was that was a kids movie, right? Uh, <laughs> sure. Was it? Sure. I, I, saw, I saw it as a kid. <laughs> you saw a lot of things as a kid that, like, no normal kid probably should have seen. Yeah. <laughs> I, dis- I disagree. <laughs> it's like me with uh, The Naked Gun. I saw those movies as a kid. Oh, sorry. Probably shouldn't have. Yeah. But then I watched them later as an adult, and, like, there was a complete another layer of yeah. uh, humor that I didn't pick up when I was, like, eight. I love that, though. When you, like, catch that when you're older, because you're like, oh, I loved this movie as a kid. Let's watch it again. And then there's, like, little things, and you're like... It's oh, like, my Whoa, God. That, that, was, that was a penis joke. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even realize. <laughs> Although Naked Gun, that was pretty kid-friendly. I watched that when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. It's got everybody's uh, favorite uh, sports star, O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah, forgot about he, that. He appeared like, I know he appeared in the first two. I don't know if he was in the third one. I don't think so. Ooh, that's spicy. Yeah, I think yeah. it was the first two. Yeah, it's so so weird. Like it, going back and watching those movies, it's like, hey, it's O'Shea. So, yeah, that guy's gonna kill his wife and her friend. Yeah, unconfirmed. Uh, allegedly. 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 Come but, on. But he wrote really, a book called "I Did It." Yeah. No, no, wasn't it called no, like "If, if I, I Did I, If I But like, did if it. you look at like the color of the text, like the font on the cover, I don't know if we can pull that up, but in red, it's like "I Did It." <laughs> And like, it's like, if is in white, and then I did it is in red, I think. 
he, oh man, that's <laughs> oh, oh man, but come he, was, on. He, he did end up in jail for like uh, sports memorabilia, like he was trying yeah. stealing it back from someone or something. It was so was bizarre how issues. he like actually ended up in jail, but yeah. <laughs> oh, OJ, <laughs> knock oh. it off, man, <laughs> knock it off. Let's get back to uh, yeah, we kind of got off topic. <laughs> yeah, <here. laughs> let's get back to talking about some movies uh, on Netflix. Uh, I think all of us have seen the death of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. watched it last night. Yeah, yeah. I uh, as, as per your recommendation. Yeah. yeah, apparently I don't give good recommendations because like I checked out like the the critic scores and like all that kind of stuff, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh, this is a great movie, and like everybody else was like, what the heck are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> yeah, I didn't fare too well with a. Uh, I, I think really it, anyone like I I like this the fact that they said it in Thailand because you don't see a yeah. lot, lot yeah. of that. Um, it was pretty for me. It was pretty by the numbers though. Yeah, I yeah, mean, like yeah. it's it's definitely paint by numbers for sure. Yeah, like, they're like they didn't do anything kind of revolutionary with kind of the suspense horror. Yeah, that's fair. I, yeah. I like how quickly they got into things though. Yeah, that's nice. So you're not just sitting there kind of like. Yeah, you're not watching the kids try to drive to the cabin where they yeah. eventually get murdered. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't, I don't mind a slow burn if it's done right. Yeah, yeah, but when it's not done right, but and they, you're just sitting there like, come they on, didn't yeah, right here, so we got really yeah. nothing to worry about. But like, I was like, the thing that blew my mind, though, oh, like I had a total moment where I was like, Luke, Luke Hemsworth. I'm like, is he related to the Hemsworth <laughs> brothers? That I was like, oh, he's <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> like he Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I pulled that. I was like, damn. I'm like, this guy looks a lot like. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know there was. Another Hemsworth out there. Yeah, well, there's th- three, right? Yeah, at, at least Liam, Chris, Chris and, and this Luke. Dude. Luke. Yeah, yeah. He's the Th- they're probably hiding another one somewhere. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe he was just like, you know what, you guys got this. Yeah. I'm good. But apparently, Luke Hemsworth, like, he was it's actually in Westworld ones. too, and I didn't know that. And I was like, how the heck did I miss that? He looked familiar, right? Uh, but like, I-, I couldn't place him. So. Yeah, and he was also in like an Australian TV show. Well, they're that's Aussies, so... Yeah. No, yeah, sense. no, I know, but, like, I can't remember the name of the show, but that's, like, what he's mostly known for. Like, that's how he got into acting. Yeah. Hmm. It's like how Gibson started in Mad Max. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is... It's funny watching the, the dubbed over version, because they had Australian <laughs> accents, so they yeah. redubbed Mad Max. Yeah, the ADR on that <laughs> thing is <laughs> yeah. pretty rough. <laughs> that's amazing. No one could understand the Australian. Yeah, they're all just like, what is he saying? We got to fix this. And well, I like on like American TV shows, they'll subtitle like someone with a British accent. They do yeah. that or Australian a lot. Or, like, I can't remember what movie I was watching, but it was like this person had like a really strong like Asian accent. And I saw the subtitles. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, yeah. I just love how they do. Okay. So, yeah, we're, again, we're yeah, getting we're off like topic. Way off topic. topic. <laughs> um, well, the trailer got released last week for, uh, I think I pronounced Raya. And the last dragon. It's kind yeah. of a new, uh, you know, Disney thing. Uh, yeah. It's done by the people who did Moana. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks interesting. Uh, yeah. It's a East Asian kind of uh, yeah. centric oh. uh, type movie. Like the, there is a dragon, and it's kind of the Asian dragon, like the long, long okay. snake like nice thing. So. Um, yeah, that's coming out a little bit later. Um, I still get yelled at for not having seen Moana. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I've never seen it. To be fair, like if you're not like a huge yeah Disney fan, like I like you're yeah. not gonna want to watch it. Animation but, like, thing, yeah. Yeah, but like the animation, there was like little stuff in there. Like they had like um, dude and like crush in it from like Finding Nemo. They like they made a little appearance and stuff. Oh, nice. But yeah. the animation of the water alone, I was like, whoa, yeah. like it was incredible. I usually mm-hmm. like when they come out. I usually I'll I'll watch them. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, this one. Kind of looks interesting. I'll probably watch it when it comes out. Um, Disney Plus, I take it. It's going to yes. be Disney Plus, but oh no! Uh-oh. I think they're no. doing the, the Disney Plus like premium things. Disney so. Plus 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 oh. Plus. Yeah, plus so Plus. You got to pay twice. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll wait until it's free on Disney Plus. I yeah. don't need to see it that badly. Probably won't have to wait that long. Yeah, I don't actually, think so. Because uh, I think the few times that they've done it, it's like a month later. Yeah, they've released it just. On, on Disney Plus. Yeah, because like, I think the last one they did was Mulan, and from what I heard, it was definitely not worth paying for. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people didn't like that movie. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see. <laughs> and uh, now for our kind of big topic. Oh, dun, dun, oh boy. Podcast, oh, boy. We decided to talk about some of our favorite films by the decade. Yeah. Starting in uh, the 1980s. I'll kick things off. We mentioned Bill Murray earlier. Yep. yep. I mean, this Classic. would be a strong contender for a pick, but it's not my pick. I had to go with another Bill Murray movie. All right. With Ghostbusters. Nice. Yeah. 
That's a classic. It is. It's uh, very lightning in the bottle. Like yeah, it, it's been. They try to reproduce it with Ghostbusters too. Yeah. And then they did that mm-hmm. remake in 2016, and nothing yeah. has really gotten that kind of original charm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. If if you can't get Rick Moranis back, then don't even try. God bless yeah. my, that I think man. He's by the way, actually going to be back in, in this the, one in the new one. That's yeah, the one that's coming out this yeah. October I think now. So. Yeah, something like that. Ooh, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, that's been pushed back like three yeah. times. Yeah, it's just but, kind of uh, annoying. But yeah, as far as I know, Moranis and I think Sigourney is uh, <gasps> coming. She, back. She she signed on. Yeah, nice. Oh, I'm a hundred percent for that. I could be wrong about that, but uh, I think she might be. I won't lie. Like I think part of the reason that. Like the first Ghostbusters did so well was because Bill Murray was just like fire Peter in that Venkman. movie. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Venkman. Yeah. Every, every like line delivery in that yeah. by Peter Venkman is yeah, it was spectacular. Just, it was just fantastic. But like yeah. even like the original crew though, like all of the guys, it's like I feel like them trying to reproduce it like in 2017 with like the all female cast. Like I was kind of like that didn't go well. Ah, it didn't have the same spark. I didn't. I didn't feel anyways. I don't know if yeah, anybody pe- else watched it, but yeah, people were mad at that movie as soon as the trailer came out for sure. Um, well, I mean, for the Ghostbusters, for me, it was kind of like the formative movie of my youth as well. Because yeah. like, I had the cart, I watched the cartoon. I had like yeah. all, all the, yeah, cars. the cartoon. I had the Ecto one nice. car. Uh, so That's did, you have, awesome. did you have the the backpack? No, I never had the backpack. Yeah. But uh, me neither. I was. No, I was one. really, really into it. Fun. Well, maybe not so fun. Fact: uh, Ernie Hudson. Yeah. Uh, he actually auditioned to be, play himself in the Ghostbusters cartoon, but he didn't get it. What? Went to Arsenio <laughs> Hall. What? How? How? <laughs> that doesn't make any You're sense. You're not you enough? Yeah, that's Hollywood. Yeah. Like, the huh. dude literally got replaced by somebody else because he couldn't play himself well enough? Yeah. Was there in the cartoon? That's wrong. Oh, that's in the cartoon. That's, yeah. Like, Arsenio did the voice in the cartoon? Yeah, Arsenio did. What? Yep. Cool. I, I actually kind of love that. <laughs> I mean, it sucks for Ernie Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Could you imagine getting that callback, though? Like, yeah, yeah we can't pick you. Yeah, we you're not, you yeah. for your own part. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he was, like, the only, like, actual guy from the movie who applied to do, like, the voices. Oh, so. my God. Yeah. And they said no. <laughs> Ouch. That's, that's kind of harsh. Oof. That's pretty a bad burn. burn. Ooh. But uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be back for the uh, the new movie as well. Oh, so. nice. Good. Yeah. I'm okay. Looking cool. forward to that. Who do you guys got for your 80s pick? I'll, I'll let you go first. Yeah, you let me yeah, go first? You go first. 80s was tough, man. Yeah. 80s oh. was super tough. There's 90s was too. I mean, we'll just from Bill Murray movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, right? But uh, actually my favorite movie ever. Oh, sorry. I got a hair on the microphone here. This is probably staying in the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, even like my favorite movie ever made was made in the 80s, but I think I feel that transcends 80s, so I'm not going to name it here. But I think what best wraps up mm-hmm. 80s movies for me, to Stand By Me. Stand, yeah. Oh, that's a classic. Stand by that, me. that is a classic. Stephen King. Yeah, yep. that's my boy. Which, I mean, actually, Stephen King was putting out a lot of bangers in the 80s. At yeah, least was. based on his stuff. For sure. Strong cast, like people who yeah. started out yeah. uh, later became yeah. big names. Corey Absolutely. Feldman, Jerry yep. O'Connell. Will, 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 <laughs> Will yeah. Wheaton has a bit of a sort of, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a great movie. Um it was actually nominated for Best Foreign Language Film in Japan. Cool. Which I found kind of strange. Because you, you, don't, you don't think of it as a foreign... Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously it yeah. is, but... Like, over there it is, and like... Yeah, that's weird. That's cool, though. Um, for the people who uh, have seen it, Stand By Me, uh, you probably remember the leech scene. Oh, yeah. Apparently yeah. that really happened to Stephen King. Yo. Oh, like real life? Like the, yeah, yeah. Like the whole... I don't know how much I can describe it on here, but... Uh, oh, yeah, oh... Yeah. So that he pulled from real life for that. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Apparently, oh. uh, apparently that happened. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I don't, yeah, no. <laughs> he's, he's, he's... King has done so much stuff like non-horror that people, I think, don't really realize. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently he does a thing, too, where, like, uh, for, like, film students and stuff, like, he'll offer his script up for, like, a dollar. Yep. Oh, so they can, like, go shoot it? Yeah. I, I 100% nice. tried to do that. Really? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like, when I was like, I, I want to make Cell. Because, like, that one for me was, like, incredible. But then hmm. Cell came out, and I was like, well. Oh, oh darn. <laughs> and a fun little story about the shooting of Stand By Me. Yeah. Is uh, <laughs> one of the locations they were shooting at had a, a Renaissance festival going on nearby. This is according to Kiefer Sutherland. Okay. Who's also in the movie. During an interview. I about that, actually. Um, yeah, so they checked out the, the cast and the crew. Like, hey, let's go check out this Renaissance, Renaissance Festival. So they were hanging out. They bought some cookies. But 
Turns out those were adult cookies. <laughs> And no one had any idea. Because that's what you think about <laughs> when you think of the renaissance, right? Yeah, it's like, let's go get high. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, they all got stoned by accident. Uh, and they found Jerry O'Connell, who played the fat kid. Yeah. And these which are children, so, too. Which is so bizarre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they found him crying and high in the park. Wow. That poor uh, kid. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted a chocolate chip cookie, and he got like, a heck of a lot more. I've seen that viral, kind of viral video of Jerry O'Connell singing Prince to his kids in I the car. I have not seen that, no. <laughs> Look it up. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I've seen him in something recently, and uh, yeah, his, his career didn't really <laughs> I think he peaked with Sliders. That was a good show. Yeah. Like sliders, sliders was fantastic. You had Gimli in it. Yeah, yeah, oh, I did, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's really all I got for Stan. Oh, and I mean, Benny King, Stand By Me. Yeah. You can even slap that song on the end of a bad movie, and you're going to walk away feeling pretty good. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's my best turn. Base, yeah. best, okay, one of the best bass lines the, ever, the, by the way. <laughs> that was the transition. So I actually kind of cheated <gasps> in uh, a way uh, because I did live action and animated films okay. for each one. So uh, for the first one, for the 80s, for the animated one, I did Kiki's Delivery Service, okay. which is like one of the first yeah. Ghibli films I ever like owned. And I remember being a kid just sitting there and just like, I want to be a witch. <laughs> I was, I I was right so excited. I mean, who does it? Really? Right? And it was like, I don't know, it's just like a really wholesome film. And Ghibli always puts out really good films. Yep. Yeah, I they're pretty anyways. They're pretty consistent. Right? Uh, and then for live action, I did Enemy Mine. Ooh, nice. Louis yeah. Gossett Jr., yes. I believe. Yeah, and uh, uh, Dennis Quaid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, a good one. oh, it's a classic. It is. Uh, right. I actually watched it like a couple months ago. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I haven't seen that movie forever. Like uh, it's one of those movies that kind of sticks with you. Yes. Uh, lots of great visuals. Um, you know, fantastic uh, casting. I thought. Oh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty cool like concept. Yeah, I mm-hmm. loved it. Like I, it was funny because like my dad was like, "Oh, you should like watch this film," and I was kind of like, "Ah, okay." It doesn't sound interesting. And then I watched it and I was like, wow, I uh, I kind of love this. <laughs> so it's like the first thing that I thought of when I thought of the 80s. I was like, enemy mine, for yeah. sure. Yeah, the makeup is great. Oh, yeah. Practical makeup, yeah. which I appreciate. Yeah. And anything practical is like always like appreciated, though, because I feel like, it, it, like, yeah, CG takes a lot of time and stuff, but like something about seeing like the practical like, like, effects, practical makeup is just like, you know how much work that went into that. Like that person sat in that chair for like how long to yeah, look like that. Hours. Yeah, right? Usually, yeah. So, I don't know. There's, I like. I'm, I'll always be a practical effect person over CG. I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah, move on to the 1990s. Oh, this is a tough oh, one too. Yeah. Um, this is rough. You you've already done one Stephen King movie. I'll do yeah. another. Oh, Shash- okay. Shashank Redemption. Nice. Heck yes. Yeah. That um, is a classic. I, when I was picking these movies, I I tried to go with the movies that kind of stuck with me, mm-hmm. and Shashank is one of those movies that, if it's on TV or whatever, I'll stop what I'm doing. And I'll watch Shawshank. It's got that terrific uh, uh, Morgan Freeman narration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. terrific, uh, terrific cast. Uh, yes. Clancy Brown's in it. Um, Tim Robbins, obviously. Tim Robbins, yeah, absolutely. And the ending is is satisfying. Like it, yeah. You know, uh, it's it's kind of a happy ending, which you know sometimes you need. Sometimes you need to watch something that you know kind of has a, a a good ending. So. That, that's definitely my pick for the uh, 1990s. That, I, well, the 90s were a hard yeah. they were a decade to pick Big something time. from as well. Yeah. What was it? Was it was it Family Guy that made the joke? Or I'm pretty sure it was on some TV show. It's like how how did he get the poster up once he was in the tunnel through his wall? <laughs> Actually, yeah, no. Uh, Family Guy <laughs> did like a whole thing with Stephen King. They like, they picked a bunch of like his good question, of yeah. his like uh, short stories. Like they did Stand by Me too. Actually, really, <laughs> and um, also Shawshank. And it's like they made like a whole joke about it, like at the end where it's like he's waiting for him, and he's like, "Oh, he didn't just take the money and run, did he?" Like <laughs> he just like making jokes like that, right? Yeah. But yeah, no, Family Guy definitely did that. Yeah, like, how did sure. you get that poster up on your? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless he just went like under like the pulled up the bottom flap and mm-hmm. kept see that. Yeah, that would make Maybe. sense. There, there. That's my film theory. Yeah, I like it. All right, I think I, I like think we cracked. I think we cracked the code. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Stephen, Stephen King's watching somewhere like, guys, stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop thinking about it. <laughs> You're thinking too hard. <laughs> yes, it's a movie. Calm yeah. down. But yeah, no, I mean, it was almost a toss up for between that and the Green Mile. Oh, I forgot. I think I you made the right choice. Yeah. 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 But like the Green Mile is still such a good movie. Yeah. Duncan. No, yeah. <gasps> yeah. no, but I, no I think I think Shawshank takes it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit better. The yeah. Green Mile had more of a 
more of a um, supernatural. Yeah, they got they yeah, definitely. It. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. All right, who's next on the chopping block? Who wants to say their 90s? Uh, I guess that's me, hey? Yeah. All right, I'm 90s again was really tough. This hair is still here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hair <heritage. laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. We're good. Okay, back to business. Uh, Natural Born Killers. Yeah. Classic. Directed by Oliver Stone, For who sure. did the platoon, Born on the Fourth of July, JFK, yeah. and other great movies. Uh, he he kind of kind of went off the deep end. Like nowadays, he's really into conspiracy theories. Yeah. yeah. But we're in the '90s, so let's stay in the '90s. Yep. Screenplay. Uh, scre- screenplay by uh, Quentin Tarantino. That's my boy. That's your boy. Uh. Yeah, it's just an amazing movie. Uh, I was doing some, a little bit of research on it. So your typical movie has about six to 700 cuts. It yeah. says 3,000. What? Yeah, they used 18 different film formats. There's animation. There's It's all black and white. It's all of it. If you're interested in editing video, Check definitely it. take a look at this movie. It, uh, actually, it definitely insp- influenced me a bit. I was like, yo, I want to do that. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the soundtrack! The soundtrack was great. It yes. was it was the '90s, so like, it was still a time when soundtracks were almost like albums. Yes, yep. definitely. Like you had, well, Natural Born Killers, um, Reality Bites, the singles yep. soundtrack was huge. Yeah. Dazed and Confused. I think everyone had that soundtrack. Mm. At least in my friend her circle of friends. Took us uh, sixty days to shoot. 11 months to edit. <laughs> well, wow, with the amount of like yeah. editing with the different You're formatting and animation. Yeah. yeah, so especially like editing hard. in the 90s. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, they That's were like, doing yeah. film. Like, it, like, it, like, I, like pace, literal. They weren't using Premiere. Yeah. Yeah, like knowing that they took that much time, like you, yeah. you, that's a whole nother respect, level of respect for like the editor on that. Like, wow. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in case you haven't seen it, it's about, it's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet, Bonnie and Clyde mashup. Uh, kind of. Satire on Basically, how uh, the media makes serial killers famous. Yep. Really. Which kind of relates to what we were talking about with uh, Night Stalker a couple. Weeks yeah. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. idea, really. And okay. uh, one, well, not really fun fact, but uh, there's a scene near the end of the movie where they shot it in a prison. Yep. And they use the actual inmates, <laughs> and this is like a high security prison. These are like violent criminals. Yeah. So they used them as extras for the first two weeks, but then they had to go to lockdown. So they had to bus in like 200 extras. <laughs> it's like, okay, that didn't. I think we worked them up too much, boys. Yeah. Well, the fact you had to put them into lockdown afterwards. So like, yeah. ooh. Like, I don't know if it had anything to do with the filming itself. Probably did. Yeah, like I low-key feel like that was a, <laughs> that was, yeah. I don't know about that. So lesson learned. Mistakes were made. Moving on. Yeah. Rachel. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking about like how terrifying that would have been though. Like you're in like an actual maximum Ooh. security prison and you're like oh these guys like actually did stuff yeah. like yeah, yeah, bad yeah. stuff well there's actually one dude he uh there's a scene in the prison where uh two guys like staring each other down at the table and the one dude who oliver stone used in the final cut of the movie he was a uh, an inmate and i think he was in there for uh killing his wife and kids with a lead pipe Ooh. so he's in a movie yeah i don't I, don't know, I mean, it lives up to the title. They yeah. have <laughs> born killers and they're in their film. Yeah, so straight up, there's a dude in there that did that. Yeah. I'm going to lighten the mood now. Um, yeah, that's, that's a <laughs> so for my 90s <laughs> animated, I'm, I don't know if anybody else has seen this because it wasn't like a Disney or like a Pixar or anything, no. but it's called Cats Don't Dance. I, don't I can't say I have. I love that movie so much, but like watching it as an adult, like I actually rented it the other night because I was like, oh my God, like I forgot about this movie. <laughs> and uh, it's got a lot of, darker adult themes in it that I didn't realize until yeah. like now and I was like oh this is bad like it had hmm. some like hints of like Hollywood and how like racist it used to be like stuff like that and I was like yeah. oh <laughs> I just like the soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> like yes I was right, I but like, any of that stuff but basically it's just like a this, this cat leaves his like Indiana home or you know, like, small town and, like, goes to Hollywood because he wants to make it big yeah. as, like, a cat L- actor. Live the dream. Yeah, and then mm. he finds out that, like, animals don't actually get, like, leading roles and stuff. And then it's, like, this, just a whole, this whole thing. Yeah. And uh, they actually have, like, this one character. Her name is Darla Dimple. And, like, she's basically this, like, almost Shirley Temple-esque kind of thing. But she's, like, insane. <laughs> and she's, like, a crazy, insane little child that, like, has massive anger problems and hates animals. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so right. if you're looking for something other than Disney and Pixar to watch that's animated... Yeah. Cats don't dance. And Cats this don't dance, oh, I have know. to give a shout out to Pulp Fiction because I I, I, I figured yeah. Tarantino I, was gonna But that's not my pick. 
Really? I picked Ooh. Silence of the Lambs because I yeah. feel like that was okay, one of the most okay. iconic movies in my life. Yeah, that's like, such a good movie. We've talked about that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah we did. So, like, there's nothing else really <laughs> need to be said. <laughs> like, just, if you haven't seen it, just watch it. Yep. Yep. Like, yeah, no. I won't get into that because we'll be yeah. here for hours. So. <laughs> they won an Oscar. Horror movie. They did. They don't pick up horror movies. Actually, both Sir Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster won uh, leading roles yeah, in that movie. That, that makes true. sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, they, like, they swept when that came out. But anyways. Yeah. Cool. All right. Moving into the 2000s. It, it started to get harder. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Every yeah, decade. Um, I had to go with the Children of Men. Nice. Nice. That's 2000s. a good one. Like, uh, looking through the list of, like, Top movies from 2000s, like I kind of was like, okay, I'm picking this, and then I'd go down the list, and there's another one. But yeah. the one that kind of survived was uh, Children of Men. Yes. Uh, Clive Owen. Uh, it takes place in the future year 2027. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty soon. That's coming up. Which is only like seven years away. That's scary. From, uh, or six years away now. So, But uh, fantastic kind of sci-fi uh, topic. Um, there's, you know, people just stop having kids. Yeah. And then, like, a pregnant woman shows up and is about, like, trying to get her to a place to kind of repopulate the world. And uh, great cast. And it's got two fantastic shots where they shoot continuously. I love those. There's a car chase scene, and then there's a scene where, like, they're fighting in, like, an apartment building. And both of them are, like, the camera does not stop rolling. There's no camera tricks yeah. or anything. They yeah. just keep shooting. And both of those are fantastic. Yeah, the cinematography was amazing. Yeah, yeah. like, I have nothing but respect because, like, I remember that uh, apartment fight scene and, it, like, looking at it from, like, just, like, watching it, it's incredible. But, like, knowing how much work actually went into that, like, who? Like, oh, yeah, pre-production was probably oh a nightmare. God. Oh, yeah. my God, yeah. <laughs> Planning that out and figuring everything. Well, well, just oh the God! Logistics yeah. of everything. But like that, I feel like that makes you like appreciate the movie way more, though. It's like when you know how much work they actually put into it, and it's like, wow! Like I, like nothing but like yeah. respect. My one complaint. Oh. Because I, yeah, you always got to have one. Yep. Again, cinematography amazing, but there's a scene before. Uh, okay, I don't want to give any spoilers. Um, f- before one of the car chases, when they're backing out of when they're getting attacked. Yeah. Before that, there's a scene like, oh, I know what where you they, uh, yeah. Clive Owen spits a ping pong ball into um, right, what's her name? Crap! Don't look at me. I don't know. Julianne Moore. <laughs> Julianne Moore. It took me a second, <laughs> but like, he spits it into her mouth, and she catches it. Yeah. And just it's so obviously CG. <laughs> it is kind. Of, it's kind of painful. Yeah. And it just kind of takes me out of it. But then it, we're back to the movie, and everything's fine. You gotta wonder, like, like oh. was part of the reason they CG'd it is because they actually tried it Maybe. and it just failed epically. Maybe. They're like, you know what, screw it, we're just gonna. Yeah, we'll do. We'll <laughs> fix it in post. Gonna, yeah, fix it in post. Fun Clive Owen fact for me: the first time I saw him was in a video game. He was in a full mo- motion game called uh, Privateer Two: The Darkening. Never even heard and, of it. Yeah. It was the, it was <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was the first time I, I saw him. And then I saw like children. I, it's like, hey, it's that guy from that that like <laughs> game that I played. <laughs> I recognize him. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Moving up in the world. All so right. Yeah. Who do you guys got for the two thousands? All right, you go. Michael. I'm coming at you all the way from Japan. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Battle Royale. Nice. Oh yeah. Battle Classic. Royale. Bit controversial when it came out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they tried to ban it. Yep. Par- Parliament actually tried to ban. Oh, it's based on a gra- graphic novel. Yep. So the, the I've, I've read that graphic novel actually. Nice. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. Um, but yeah, the Japanese Parliament tried to ban it, the yeah. book and the movie, but it kind of had like a Streisand effect. Yeah. Where like Ooh, people or that, that they, they, they tried to ban it. Yeah. Before like, it got talked about. So they kind of backfired on them there. But um, the, and yeah. then, then Hunger Games ripped it off. Yeah. yeah I was upset when I saw that trailer because I didn't know about the Hunger Games books. Yeah. I just saw the trailer and like, what? I, I saw the no. exact same thing. It's like, it's Battle Royale. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, 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 hopefully someone gets sued for this, but apparently not. Yeah. So if you like Hunger Games, uh, you probably like Battle Royale. Yeah. Hunger Games with gore. Yeah. And uh, a lot more murder. <laughs> a, a lot, lot more. more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Ooh, actually, yeah. And uh, I guess when it came out, because it's... It's one of the top 10 highest grossing movies in Japan. Oh, yeah. Wow. So the uh, attempt at banning it obviously did not work. No. But, uh, yeah, I guess in North America, no distributor would touch it because of the Columbine thing. Yeah. I remember people oh. talking about it like, like, just in the news in general when it was coming out. Like, it's, it's like, oh, there, there's kids murdering each other yeah, in like, this movie. Do this. Yeah. Actually, 
to circle back to a uh, Natural Born Killers, that movie actually got blamed for the Columbine thing too. Natural Born Killers. That and Doom. Yeah, and Doom. And, and, yeah, and Marilyn Manson, and they're just looking to blame any. Yeah, they didn't. Bad, yeah. They literally were just like, "Oh, it's like everybody else's fault, but these kids." Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Battle Royale. Yeah. If you're into uh, Lord I of the Flies, that for it for a watch or mm-hmm. pick up the graphic novel as well. Yeah. Yeah, both yeah. are good. Spend some money, buy a book. Yeah. So, two thousands. Like I had a hard time. There's no real classics in no. the two thousands. Yeah, I couldn't find any. Well, I mean. Animated, though, I think this is a classic. I think it'll go down just for the first 15 minutes of the film, and that's Up. Yeah, yes. that's still ter- that destroys that. If you can watch the first 15 minutes of Up and not cry, there's something wrong with you. I, don't, I honestly don't think I've done it. At least, like, welling up a little yes. bit. Yeah, like, even just a little bit of, like, yeah. tears. But, like, people who could just, like, straight face, just, like, whatever, I'm like, yo, you yeah. got, and they we got with, problems. They do it with absolutely no dialogue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, one of the, I think it's one of the most touching scenes in, like, animation history to be honest like i think like that whole entire sequence it's like wow yeah it's, it's just a, beautiful oh, the, first and, like, time the I rest of that. yeah the rest oh. of the film too right because it's like you're kind of like going into it not knowing and then like that entire sequence happens and then you're like oh my <laughs> god but like still at the end of the movie you're kind of sitting there kind of like oh you know yeah. what that was good like yeah, this, this oh, i still feel good after the first time it. i saw that i was a mess oh yeah. my god yeah it was embarrassing oh it was bad but, Even it, the but like time, <laughs> I've seen the movie a lot. Yeah, I have too. But it's like one of those you can go back to, and like yeah, you're totally still sure. like, yeah, Squirrel. this is a great movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, for live action, I have a I have a tradition of always watching this every fifth of November. Uh, I know what this uh, is. And it's V for Vendetta. Yeah. It's uh, it's my uh, it's my go to every like every time I want to watch like a post apocalyptic kind of thing. It's that. That. One, that was actually like I was kind of teetering between Children of Man. Yeah. And it, because the both of them kind of have that future. Absolutely. Uh, dystopian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can see that. But it was, I won't lie, like, since, like, 2020, it's, like, we were, we've been in lockdown and, like, all that kind of crazy <laughs> st- stuff, and I was, like, okay, like, I'll, like, it's 5th of November, I gotta watch V for Vendetta, as tradition, and... Some people have first, Christmas movies. Yeah. Fir- I have the 5th of November. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, like, watching it and within like the first scenes like and them being like quarantine and like we you, you have lockdown and like all this stuff i was like this is hitting way too Curfew. close to home today like and it was just it was eerie like the similarities like between like reality and like the movie and i was like oh my god so like <laughs> if anything good comes out of this i hope we get a v because like i would be down for that yeah for absolutely sure. like that guy is incredible and i only found out recently because i think you told me who played v and that was um oh no Matrix. Hugo Weaving, right? There you go. Yeah. yeah. And I, I had no idea it was him for the longest time. Really? No idea. I had nothing. Like, yeah, well, I, I knew that. But. And then, like, yeah, you told me, and I was like, no way. And I, like, looked it up. I'm like, oh, my God. There you go. It's him. So, but, yeah, definitely V for Vendetta. If yeah. you haven't watched that, watch it. I remember watching it in social class. Our teacher was, like, very animate about oh, us. So, like, she, so she was hungover? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he wasn't, actually. It was uh, a surprise. V for, v for Vendetta's long. Oh, no, yeah. he made sure that was in Take our course. Like, that, he made sure that was in, like, our... Or like uh, curriculum, curriculum, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But. All right, moving on to the uh, 2010s again. Uh, it was another yeah. decade that I kind of had difficulty, that, but I actually went with an animated movie. Oh, nice from Japan. Oh, uh, came out in 2016 called uh, Your Name. It's hmm. got 98 on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, well. uh, and I think 94 for the audience score. And it's um, that's incredible. Kind of a supernatural uh, movie. There's uh, these two teenagers. One lives in the country. One lives in the city, and they switch bodies, and uh, there's a little bit more going on. Uh, like, I don't want to, like, give yeah. away too much <laughs> because it's, it's, a, it's a really good film. Uh, beautiful visuals, um, and the uh, soundtrack is uh, fantastic as well. So if you're looking for an animated film, uh, your name. Definitely. Okay. That, that's nice. on my list. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I need to know. It's good. Cool. I guess that's to me now. Yeah. All right, I'm going to South Korea for the 2010s. Okay. With uh, Ji Woon Kim, or Kim Ji Woon, depending on. I know Korean names are hard. Um, I Saw the Devil. Ooh. Oh, that's a classic. It's yeah. such a good movie. It's a. I don't know if you call it a horror. A uh, thriller? I'd go yeah, thriller. Yeah, more of a thriller. Basically, uh, a detective's wife gets killed. Yep. By a. I don't know if it's. A, just, a, just a straight Psycho. up. Yeah, straight up maniac. And basically. You spend the next uh, two and a half hours following the uh, detective, just like catching this guy. Yeah, brutally torturing him. It, like it, mm. Yeah, like they had to. 
even as rough as this movie is, it's an amazing movie. Like the pacing is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It's super well shot. Like every the acting is incredible. Yeah, but Seth Green, like film industry, has like gotten a lot of attention over like the last absolutely. Yeah, or so. they've been. Well, I mean, the uh, Parasite crazy. won that Oscar. Yeah, a couple yeah, of years ago, that was Seth best Green. Pe- yep. best picture. I think. I still haven't seen it, I and I. I I feel bad because it's like everybody's like it's just an incredible movie. Yeah, it's it's good. I plan yeah. on seeing it if it ever ends up on Netflix. I don't know. Maybe Amazon well, Prime. Maybe it'll but it'll I, end I somewhere. I feel like I've seen it on some <clears throat> streaming service. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll have to keep an eye for it. But yeah, no, this is an incredible movie. <clears throat> Bit of a cat and mouse kind of thing, but yeah, yeah, wildly violent. They had to cut out actually a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. Really, which is. Crazy considering the stuff that's all, that's still yeah. in there. <laughs> it's like, you had, like what what did you have to cut out then? Like, but um, uh, yeah, no. Um, if you want a really violent but really well made a uh, kind of a cat and mouse cop drama, I saw The Devil. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing movie. It's more have, than, uh, I haven't seen it. I'll have to check I'll, it out. I'll bring it in. I'll let you borrow it. Sounds good. That's a pretty that's, good one. Uh, yeah, no, no real weird stories to attach to this movie. Just an amazing movie. <laughs> just really violent, yeah. if yeah, anything. Wildly violent. Like, the fact they had to cut stuff out. Yeah. Like, I'm curious. It's like, what did you, what was so bad? Yeah. Like, that you had to be you like, you know what? You see, like, a director's cut of it. I yeah. think there is one. I'm not sure, though. I'd be down to watch it, but I'm also like, that's like, that's a weekend thing. You don't come in the next day after watching something like that no, and being no. like, hey, guys, what's up? You're kind of like, okay. Yeah, remember that part where, yeah. I, I, I don't even know. Don't do it. I don't even know if I Don't do it. All right, all right. We'll, we'll move on. All right. But it's violent and it's good. All right. For my 2010s, um, I actually had no problem with these ones, Okay. to be honest. Because really? um, my animated one, just for the fact that it's stop motion alone and, like, seeing the amount of work that goes into stop motion, I'm just like, yeah, that's that's money. Yeah. Uh, it's called Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we actually have uh, Matthew McConaughey, uh, hmm. Charlie's Theron, of course. That's my girl. Yeah. And uh, it's just a really well done movie. It like, is. yeah, I like the end, of the, the very end of the movie. It's not really a spoiler, but uh, it's more of like they show you how they do some of the scenes yeah. and like how massive the sets are and like how yeah. big yeah. it is. And it's just like, holy it crap. It takes them so long to do, like, you know. Yeah. Was uh, well thirty frames a second. So like yep. every like move little one second movement, you have to shoot yeah. like thirty still pictures. Yeah, it's it, amazing. And that, like well, probably twenty four. Yeah, it's, to be nerdy. <laughs> no, you're gonna be that guy. <laughs> well, thirty well. frames is TV. <laughs> Film Excuse is twenty four. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Actually. <laughs> but like. The thing that blew my mind, though, is that, like, in Kubo and the Two Strings, it's, like, uh, Charlie Theron's character is, like, a monkey. Yeah. And, like, they moved the fur yep. on uh, the monkey. So, it's, like, it wasn't just, like, movements. It's, like, oh, we have to move their hair a little bit. We got to do this. And I'm just, like, frick. Yep. No wonder it took them so long <laughs> to make the movie. But right. yeah. it's incredible. Absolutely beautiful story. And uh, the visuals, obviously, are amazing. Yeah. And then uh, live action was La La Land. Oh, yeah. Never saw it. I haven't seen it. I kind of figured y'all probably haven't. <laughs> yeah, not really my cup of tea. See, that's the thing. I'm not a huge musical person. Yeah. Oh, and I'm not opposed to musicals. Yeah, but like, like technically, a Team America was a musical. True. Yeah, that's true. Really. Like, obviously, this one is has a little bit more romance and like all that kind of stuff, right? But like, the thing that blew my mind is that like for the advertising, they kind of were like, "Oh, we should probably advertise this film." And yeah. so it's like it was like the day before the release that like everything came out about it, and that's how <laughs> I found out about it. I saw it like on I think a YouTube. Yeah. channel and I was like this looks kind of cool and then watching it I'm like the color theory alone was just beautiful I, I've seen some like clips from it yeah like, it, it does look uh, visually impressive yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is a good looking movie for sure oh it, 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 it 100% is it's like one of those films that you, you literally get lost in and you're just kind of like wow like I want to be in that right now yeah. and a really cool thing too is that like Ryan Gosling's character he played like a jazz musician who's like trying to make it big and like all that kind of stuff and um, he actually learned how to play jazz piano for this role Wow. which I again like I got full respect for yeah what do you want what do you want, <laughs> what do you want? but like I um, but yeah like Emma Stone was really great in it too I loved her character I uh, kind of showed you like the harsh reality of like trying to make it big in Hollywood and like how like you know it's like it's not as easy as people make it seem to be right it's yeah. not the typical yeah. like that kind of thing um but yeah no really really great movie uh the director actually wrote all of the music wow. and i actually nice. have the i have the soundtrack downloaded speaking of soundtracks, soundtracks. Yeah, yeah. and it's like it's unreal because it's like every like time you listen to that song or you like all that kind of stuff you're kind of sitting there you're like i just want to dance <laughs> i just want to do this this is great so yeah yeah. Um, totally, we didn't plan this, but uh, do you guys have like any upcoming movies that you're looking for? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, Antlers. Ducks. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> two completely <laughs> different movies. Ducks with Antlers. Yeah. Ducks with Antlers, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the Wendigo movie, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I am so excited. Do you want to you want to go first or can I can I um, geek out about I was it? I was just joking about the Mighty Ducks. Oh. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> no, but like he's actually excited. Uh, <laughs> he just doesn't want to say it. Uh, next Matrix. Yeah. That one looks good. I am excited for that. Yeah. Big what, time. What about you, Mike? What what are you looking forward to? Uh, again, I have those three films that I've been waiting for <laughs> for the past like three hmm. years: Ghostbusters, Top Gun Two, and Dune. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, Dune, man, this can't. Yeah, it's been uh, forever. Dune yeah. does like the prequels, like the shots that they put out. It looks unreal. Looks looks great. I'm excited. Yeah. Spice must flow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're ever interested, the guy who Spice wrote Dune, like uh, Frank Herbert. Yeah. There's like interviews with him, like on YouTube. Oh no way! And, man, that guy, he's a smart guy. He's one of those, like, people that, like, he talks about how he created Dune and everything. And, you know, the intelligence behind everything that he did. It's like, yeah, okay, mm. I, I get why you and wrote like, this one makes of, kind sense. of the yeah. premier science fiction novels that has ever been made. That's so. incredible. That's cool. Yeah. I'll have to check that so out. Did you ever see, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Jordowski's <laughs> Dune? Yeah. The documentary about how I he tried wish to make, they how he made that. Yeah. Oh, it man. Looked, he had it, what, Mick Jagger, I think. He had Mick Jagger. He had Orson Ronald Dolls. Yeah. That's, that's up like, there with uh, <laughs> Nick Cage, Superman. Yes. Like uh, movies that yeah. have get, never got made but have like a freaky like production story. Behind yeah. It. It's like, yeah. how the heck? But there is a documentary on it yeah. on Netflix, Jorodowski's Dune. Check it out. It's a wild story. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. But yeah, I guess like I'm just going to bring it back to Antlers because I am really excited about that <laughs> film. Um, I watched a few of the trailers and stuff and like it looks really well done. But like. I kind of got, like, interested, so I started looking up, like, Wendigos, because that's what the, like, movie monster is and stuff. Hollywood has it completely wrong, like, absolutely wrong to the point of, like, it's almost insulting. Yeah, the actual, like, lore. Yeah, Um, yeah. like, looking it up and stuff, apparently they're supposed to be, like, according to, like, indigenous legends and stuff, it's, like, their um, representation of, like, selfishness and greed. So it's, like, after, like, if you're not for the community, it's kind of, like, a moral of the story. It's, like, you could turn into something like this. And it's like, it's a it's an ice giant. It like moves super fast. It chews its own lips off because it's like cannibalistic and stuff. And I'm just like, wow. And we got a, yeah, a monster was, with antlers. <laughs> yeah, like, I always thought Winnego was basically like a gorilla mixed with a polar bear. No, what? Something like that. How? It's like, it doesn't have antlers. It doesn't have a deer head. But the, the f- it's like a beast. It's like Sasquatch and a polar bear had a baby. That's, a, that's kind of the impression I got. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're thinking of, like, the Marvel X-Men. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's exactly no, what I'm yeah. thinking of. No, I'm talking, like, indigenous legend kind yeah. of when to go. Like, like the way oh, they describe so it versions. is terrifying. Yeah, it's true. But, like, yeah, like, it was funny because the guy who made, like, the, the original Wendigo, like, horror movie and stuff, he, he did no research yeah. in regarding to it. So it's, like, he kind of just pulled together the most, like, messed up kind of thing that he could. Yeah, he didn't have a deer head. And then he did, like, a deer head and, like, a weird body and all this stuff. Like and then sticks. Yeah, and then it's, like, the movie released, and it wasn't until, like, years later that he, like, did the research, and he's like, oh, I have this up pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, this looks terrible. Imagine <laughs> writing, like, a script about something you know nothing yeah, about. Like, right? Yeah. I've tried nothing, and I'm all out yeah. of ideas. Yeah, well, that's part <laughs> of the reason I'm kind of excited for Antlers is, like, yeah, like, the movie monster from, like, the little clips that you see, it's, like, they, it looks like they still stuck with, like, the... The, like the antlers and like all that kind of stuff hmm. yeah. but um there's like one scene where the guy was like you believe in this thing and this like native american guy or he's like oh you like this isn't real and it, like the native american guy's like yeah to you like yeah. for us it's real so it's like it's kind of cool that they're playing more into the lore of it and uh del toro is actually producing it so yeah I, del I, toro does fantastic yeah like creature stuff absolutely so i will i mm. will definitely be seeing it yeah. oh mm. oh i'm not a big del toro fan no. what nah like not even Pan's Labyrinth. Like that was incredible. Overrated. <gasps> oh, overrated. The center. No. The eye thing. Yeah, that's pretty iconic. Oh, but come as far on. as the movie goes, no, nah, it's overrated. Okay. I was gonna stand by that. Yeah. <laughs> Del Toro. I, <sighs> totally. Just. I'm which is weird because I think I see I see his trailers and like this looks good. Yeah. But like Grinding Nemo, <laughs> or like that that fish movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> I am disappointed in more ways than I can count yeah. right now, but okay. we're, we're not turning this she to falls a god. In love with a fish. We're not turning this into a Godzilla. We're okay. Come on, it's a, <laughs> it's Gr- a love story. <laughs> Grinding Nemo, thumbs down. Actually, no. Fun story. Or fun, fun story. Fun fact. I can't speak English today. Um, Del Toro actually, he originally saw the creature in the Black Lagoon. Yeah, that's a great movie. And um, he was watching it, and he was like, "Okay, 
Like, they're going to end up, the creature's going to get the girl. And then, like, obviously the creature doesn't get the girl. Yeah. And he was mad about that. So that's why he made The he Shape made of Water. That's why I made Granny That's why he was like, you know what? No, the creature deserves deserves the love like they like that's his whole entire career is like showing that like the monsters aren't really the monsters so his whole career is based off of fish fetish no <laughs> stop it Listen, we're stop gonna, it we're gonna move on now <laughs> drop uh, it yeah. gales i guess is a turn on i don't know i'm gonna I, oh, i'm mm, okay oh boy um <laughs> so yeah we mentioned this uh, someone's gotta be the bad guy don't people have put out like kids movies yeah you yes know, intended towards kids I love but, this. But uh, they've snuck in some <laughs> stuff that's not for the kids. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. Especially especially in Disney movies. Especially in Disney, yeah. It's incredible, though, because it's like they're, it, it's nice to know that they're not thinking just about the kids. Because I, I don't know about you guys. I've watched shows where it's, like, focused just on, like, making, like, children shows. And you're kind of yeah. sitting there with, like, your cousins or, like, nieces and nephews. And you're kind of like, oh, my God, shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is terrible. Because it's like you're just sitting there you're like... But it's like you can't watch like more intense stuff with them, right? So like that's the nice thing about Disney and Pixar and stuff too is like they sneak that stuff in there. You're like, ha ha, yeah. yes. Yeah. Some yeah. of them are like a thing of legend. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like the Lion King one, which is actually it doesn't say sex in the clouds. It says SFX. Yeah. It, well, didn't the animators? They're like guys. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> like, it was, that's it was, not I think true. It was, I think it was just like kind of like a internal shout out to the team. Yeah. Just like this. See, that's yeah, nice, that's, though. I but, appreciate yeah. that. But apparently, like, in the initial cut of, like, The Rescuers, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. there's, there's <laughs> like, yep. a single frame of a, uh, uh adult lady, you should say, who's <laughs> lacking the current uh, or the she's, appropriate amount of... Uh, she's probably cold. Yeah, she's probably <laughs> cold. She's probably cold. That, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they do sneak in things that... I know Toy Story. They've, oh, they've yeah. done a few different things. Mm-hmm. Like actually, they, like, I actually... I oh, I looked it up because oh, I was I was very excited. Um, there's one that, like, went way over my head and still went over my head until I think you uh, you pointed it out to me. There's mm-hmm. <laughs> there's this, like, cr- the creatures in the, um, the bully's room that, like, he, like, put oh, together yeah, and, like, all that stuff. Going. And it was, like, this, like, Barbie doll legs, legs with yeah. a fishing hook. And then I was, like, I never, like clicked in and then Chris is like yeah that's a hooker I was like oh my god it yeah, is and I just like I lost pool. it yeah, yeah but like I had no idea like even as like well into my adulthood here like and I'm just like what yeah. <laughs> like how did I miss that yeah, yeah that's a hooker yeah I got um what's another one a Pirate of the Caribbean one that I thought was pretty funny like this uh, I don't think I know this one the yeah. it's it's from the new one like where it's just Jack Sparrow and like the two new Lovers, basically, they kind of replaced Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley I'm not with sure like. If I've, I've yeah. Seen it. I okay. Have. So, the, the girl, she's like well educated or whatever, and mm. she's like, "I'm a horologist, which is the study like of stars, right?" Yeah. Obviously, pirates they don't think like that, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, "All right, that's an honest way of making a living." <laughs> and then uh, one of the pirates was like, "My mother was a horologist," and then like you can hear in the background damn good one too and i just like i hmm. lost it i laughed i was like oh my god yeah. <laughs> like how did you put that in there or the cover of a uh, little mermaid oh that yeah. that was, that was savage yeah. though you might have to google that one i don't yeah. know if uh, it's uh, kind of phallic yeah, yeah. they uh, I, I think that's the the safe appropriate is, word that we can use see the thing that like i feel like that was disney's own fault though because well, like they, how many people have seen that cover yeah. before like it got put out to like yeah. You know, the VHS. Well, yeah, like, not just that, though, but, like, the, the guy who created the cover, they fired him in the middle of it. Like, yeah. they were just like, yeah, we're letting you go. But he still had access to all that stuff. So he was like, you know what, before I go, yeah. here's a big F you kind of thing. Well, and I mean, yeah. then it was released, and then people were like, wait a minute. And then Disney was like, oh, no, yeah, what did we do? Damage control. Yeah, but it's like... It's one of those things that was that was 100% Disney's fault. Like, you could have waited. Uh, th- and there's one in Aladdin, I can't remember. Something like, I think Jasmine says something underneath her breath. Yeah. Something like that. Well, I, don't, I haven't heard that one. There's there's a scene in the Road to El Dorado as <laughs> well. <laughs> yep, Ra- I know Rachel knows exactly the, what I'm talking about. I don't think I, I know I'm trying to think how I, I could put this. Uh, it looks like <laughs> a couple of characters are in a compromising position at yes. one point. That, that's about as... As descriptive that I can get, yeah, like <sighs> or Jessica mm-hmm. Rabbit in a Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, there's a oh mm-hmm. angle there. Yeah, yeah I there think is. they pretty much scrubbed it yeah, by I, now. Yeah, I, did, I didn't notice. Like I actually watched that movie a couple of weeks ago, and nice. I didn't s- notice it. So I think maybe it's scrubbed now. Yeah, I mean you oh, could probably, probably find it on like yeah 4chan or something. Oh yeah, like you if you I'm Google sure like 
inappropriate like things in Disney movies, you will find a lot. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, adults are making these things. Oh, it's, absolutely. You, know, you got to. Sometimes you got to have a little fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Animation stressful. I got, I got one more. Oh, uh, okay. Cars. Yep. I don't know. If yeah, anybody else has watched it? It's like Lightning McQueen's kind of chilling there, and then his fangirls mm-hmm. come up, and they flash him with their headlights. And I was oh. like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. And he's just like, yeah, this is great. And I was like, oh, oh, no. Yeah. I'm watching this with my like my little cousins, and they're like, it's so funny. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> like probably You don't know. Heads. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you have no idea what this is. Uh, they probably got it. Still. Even, even as a kid, I would, I would, I would have got that joke. <laughs> no, and like, fair enough. But at the same time, it's like, oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Well, uh, I think that bet wraps it up. But before yeah. I go, I oh. got to mention that Screech from Saved by the Bell has passed away. <gasps> no! Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, no. He uh, he was battling lung cancer apparently oh. for the last uh, couple months. Passed away at the age of 44. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Today? Uh, yesterday, yeah, I think. Like mm-hmm. yesterday or late yeah. yesterday or early yeah. this morning. Damn. Yeah. Well, rest well, in peace, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's t- terrible. Damn, dude. Yeah, yeah. he's like... He, like cultural icon. He yeah, was. Like for anybody who like grew up in the 80s or 90s. Yeah, for sure. Saved by the Bell. I mean, come on. Yeah. But, uh, Everybody yeah, knows R. that. R.I.P. Screech. Well, like, yeah, you just ruined yeah. my day, dude. Oh. <laughs> I'll get and over it. And I ruined it. everybody else's it. day as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get over it. I'll yeah. be fine. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode of Media Minute Roundtable. I'm Michael yeah. Forward. I'm Chris Reskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Ka-chow. <laughs>